Tony Weitenberg, uh, Classic Aero Machining Service. Yes. You are the builder of this brilliant little rotary yeah. engine. I am, sir. <laughs> well, not, sir. That's not quite correct. Myself and my team build these engines. Sure, it's the team at CAMS that have built these yes, engines. that's right. correct. Now, the one we've just seen on display today, yep. um, is that the first one? No, that's number four. Number four, okay. Yep. So, how did you start with number one? And when did you start? Uh, well, the idea came, well not the idea, I've always wanted to do, build, build a rotary engine and the opportunity came to borrow one about uh, 2014 it was and so we borrowed an engine and started to draw it up and um, we managed to find a couple of people that actually wanted them and were prepared to put some money down for it and it was like this is great. <laughs> so we finished the drawings and we made engine number one uh, which is uh, Took us, I think, probably two and a half years to, to, to do number one, uh, which went to Tavis in Brisbane. Okay. In, yep. Into an Eindecker. Right. Um, he was very, very happy with what he got. Um, and uh, number two engine went to uh, Dayton, Ohio. Uh, we've since made, so number four is out here in the paddock. Uh, number five is in France. Number three is in. Dallas, Texas. Okay, so the first one, which is flying with, uh, it's Andrew Carter, is it? Andrew Carter, Dallas. Dallas, yep, yeah. yep, yep. So that's flying in the in the Iron Decker. It's in flying in the Iron Decker. Yes. Great. Okay. And what about the others? Have they been flying? So that, you, therein lies the problem we have. We don't have many engines flying. So um, number two is going into a so, uh, into a camel, so a camel. Um, it's under construction. Right. Uh, number three is going into one and a half strata, which is under construction. construction right. Number four is here. Number five is going to a camel, which is under construction. Okay, so we've got a bit of a theme here. <laughs> there is, but they're very, they're all very, very close. So the one and a half strata uh, is from Capero, and he's planning to uh, planning to be flying very, very soon. They're covering the aeroplane uh, now, um, and he wants to fly that from Dallas to Oshkosh this year. Right. So that's a fair distance. That'll be a good, good. That's going to prove, yeah, yeah that, that that what we've done is is working. So yeah. Right. Excellent. We know what we're happy with what we've done. We just need other people to be right. happy with what we've done. Now the engine that you've got on the um, on the, the truck today, mm. um, I believe that's actually going into an aircraft shortly as well. That's, yeah. So uh, that, that engine we made uh, to dis display at Oshkosh uh, 2018, um, and we did display it. Um, lots and lots of interest, um, but it ended up sitting there for we, we didn't we didn't sell it, so um, we've ended up bringing it back. And um, we're going to put it into a shop with pup for the air show here at uh, Easter. Okay. The marker. Uh -huh. So we're actually going to see an engine fly and maybe get some hours up on mm. it, which is great. So tell me a little bit about this engine. I mean, mm. what 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 make? What horsepower is it? So it's a gnome. It's a copy of a um, 100 horsepower gnome mono soup up. Um, we've basically taken the original engine and copied it as close as we can to the original. Uh, we've made a few changes. To bring it into the modern era, um, bearings uh, are available off the shelf, so they're not specials. Um, we've tried to make it like simple. Yeah. Um, the modern materials, so the cranks are forty three forty. So we've, we've we've gone as strong as we can with all the internals to make it make it last longer. Right. Um, so my understanding is, well, some of these engines back in the First World War, they were looking at an operational time of maybe 10, 12 hours at the true. most. That's yes, right. So you are obviously going to be hoping for a lot longer than we're, that. We're, we're confident we can we can actually run a lot longer than that. Um, yeah. The issue, one of the issues is the fact that cast oil gums up the engine. Right. Um, and we're looking to do some experiments on, on some mineral oils to see how they go. But unfortunately, people like the smell of cast oil. So... Um, and the problem that comes with 25 hours, the engines get sticky and they're going to need to be cleaned, pulled down and cleaned. So, right, um, right. 
Now that is certainly the thing that uh, that people do mention with rotaries is the, the smell of it. Yeah. And as you say, it's the castor oil. Um, I understand that, that most, if not all, rotaries have got a total loss system. Is that they right? Yeah, so it runs, it, it's burning almost five litres of oil an hour. Right, of uh, castor oil. Of castor, castor oil. oil. So, well, it's, it's using it. I wouldn't say it's burning. It's probably burning about a litre an hour. But yeah, so that you'll notice the uh, windscreen on the truck gets covered in spots of oil. Well, that's the residual oil coming out of the engine. So, right. Yeah. And so, what, so five litres of, of castor oil an hour, what sort of fuel burn? Uh, about three quarters of a litre a minute. Okay. So, uh, what's that, 40 litres an hour. Right. Um, and saying that this, this latest engine's got a slightly modified um, fuel nozzle in it, and we believe it's running a wee bit um, better than what it was originally. So, we haven't, we haven't done a fuel test on it. Yeah. Yep. yeah. We've built five engines, and every engine we've built, we've learned something. And change something. Just their mind. They're, they're actually quite small modifications, but they've all improved how the engine works. Right. Um, so our engines appear, to, uh, and I'm going to say appear because we. I can't categorically state they they um, aren't, but they appear to be running very very clean. Uh, we're getting uh, we're getting nice clean valves, um, clean plugs. Um, so we're working on trying to improve the engine. So for us, this is a long term project. We're not. In selling engines and then and then moving on to something else. We're we're here to to, to build engines and, and make them make rotary engines reliable and safe for people to use. So it's in our interest that that they work. And so the people that modifications we've made, we're, we're sharing the information we're we're getting with our clients. So um, and we'll do the same with the oil. If we if we find out that one of the oils works better than the other, then we'll let them know. Right. Um, right. So. Um, if, if we go back to Andrew at uh, Tavis for a little bit with the yep. Iron um, now my memory of the Iron Decker project was that that was being put together and then Andrew found you guys, I think, and, and mm. got the engine off you. Um, was that airframe always going to have a rotary in it or was Correct. it initially? Yeah, it was. It was built, it built um, in, in Germany and it's on loan to Tavis. Oh, okay. And it's an original, as close as you'll get to an original aeroplane. Okay. So for other builders of World War One aircraft out yep. there, and particularly I'm thinking about um, some of the replicas that have already been built, not, yep. not some of these things that are under construction at the moment, how easy would it be to take some of the engines that they've got in them currently and put one of your rotaries in? Is right. that going to be possible? Or? It is very, very possible, yeah. Yep. Um, there's, there's nothing too hard about route mounting a rotary engine. One of the reasons they use rotary engines is they're so smooth running. Um, so once once in the, the airframe that, that they actually are, are, are good, they're, they're actually quite kind to the airframe. Right. They don't vi they don't have problems with vibration. Right. Um, the gnome, the reason we chose the gnome is because the construction of the gnome is the simplest of them all. Um, and it's also the easiest of the um, rotary engines to operate. So um, rotary engines are notorious for getting rich cuts. The gnome will still do a rich cut, but it's a lot, it's a, it's a lot more user friendly, um, and people sort of shy away from the sale. It's it's, it's hasn't got a carburetor; it's hard to control. But the ignition control works really well, right. um, and once if you get your prop matched to the engine, it, it's easy to fly. And right. from people I've known that have flown gnomes, it's the easiest of all rotary engines to fly. <laughs> so right. we're calling. We're, some someone said, "Well, what, how would you call it?" Well, it's the it's the the learner rotary. You know, if you want to get into rotary engines, start with a gnome. Right, right. So one thing that that, that people who um, have spent any great time at um, Port Aerodrome and Marston or Omarka here is the um, vintage aviator stop with camel. Mm. Now that has a very distinctive sound to it. Yeah. That's also running a gnome. Whereas when you were running the the one out the front here this afternoon, the, it sounded quite different. It talk talk me through that. Vintage Aviators Camel's got a 160 gnome, so it's, it's a bigger, bigger engine. Right. It also has a, an ignition system which you can cut down, so instead of running it full, full, you can run it a quarter or a half or a third. Um, so you, you, basically what you're doing is stopping the spark plug firing. Our engine doesn't do that. The 100 horsepower engine originally only ran at, at one speed full noise. Right. Um, with our um, engine, we've built a, an electronic ignition system, A, because it's easy and reliable, yeah. um, but B, it also puts out this beautiful big fat spark. Um, so we use um, a, a modern plug, which has got a, a spark plug gap of over a millimeter. Right. So it's also less prone for um, fouling. Yep. 
Um, and so it also makes the engine very, very easy to start. But the sideline to that is we've got, um, the ignition's got um, two hall sensors in it. So one of the runs you saw, we, we actually cut, killed, knocked the ignition back. So basically you, you, you're cutting the spark plug down to one half. Right. So it's firing at half rate. So it's still using the same amount of fuel, but mm. it's only firing half as much and it drops the power right down. So it makes it quite easy for taxiing. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that, that, that certainly explains the difference. It's sort of trying to make it a bit more user friendly. And that, that was just one of the, by going with the electronic ignition, we could, we could actually do that quite 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 easily. Well certainly given the uh, the reputation of rotary engine aircraft from the First World War and training accidents and so on, I guess anything yeah. anything you can do to make it safer for, for new build aircraft well, is probably that, a good and thing. And that's the thing, is that, and I mean I think I still believe that rotary engine pilots still need to have, have a bit of nouse about running an engine and that's also where it's important for us that people know. So um, engine two, I, I actually went to Dayton and showed the guy how to run it. Right. Um, and we're quite keen on making sure that people are comfortable with what they've got before they get in an aeroplane. So, Absolutely. you know, generally they're getting into a new aeroplane, so they need to have that engine off pat. And it, again, the gnome is a simple one. You've only got a fuel nozzle or a fuel control to worry about. You don't have to worry about a carburetor and all that and other. all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously not. Oh, one lever, not two. <laughs> so you've, you've built five so far. Yes. Um, what, what's next? So we currently have two orders. Okay. Uh, both to the UK. Yep. Um, and on one of the orders I mentioned to the guy that we we're looking at putting a twin ignition system in, um, and he said, I want one. Oh, okay. Um, it actually hasn't left the drawing board yet. But right, um, yeah. yeah. It, it sort of it brings that, you know, I know it's not original and there's some people say, oh, you can't do that, but it's, it's that little element of safety, you know, have dual ignition system. Mm. Yeah. It's an aircraft, you know, and it's like, what, the more we can do to make it safer and more reliable, and it's, I'm, I'm not about to poo-poo what anyone says, well, it's not original. Well, yeah, okay, it's not original, but, you know. At the end of the day, the, the, the engine is still rotating it's still quite right. fast. And that's and, the thing. And it, it looks good, get, smells good, sounds good. It gets, you've got the right sound, you've got the right smell, you've got the right feel. The aircraft's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, yeah. but it's not going to die on you, which is yeah. what we yeah, want. Yeah, which is a big thing. Yeah. yeah. It's that safety, and, and that's where we're, it's paramount for me that it, we can make that engine as safe as possible. And as we go, we're, we're learning. Yeah. Um, I thought after we built the second engine, we knew pretty much all we needed to know. But I'd have to say that um, number five has gone out the door, and yeah, number six is going to have a couple of tweaks as well. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's an ongoing development it's an on, process. Ongoing development process. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's yeah, it's it's we're not sitting still on it. We're not just going to copy number one engine and build, build 20 of them, it's, it's, right. it's each one. We must get to the point where we say, okay, we've, 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 the mix is correct. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I mean, if we could sit and build 10 engines and play with them and work out exactly the correct design and then build them, then yeah. that'd be great. But now, I mean, we had, we had a little bit of a chat earlier on um, and, and we were talking about, the well, A, the number of engines that you've built, the fact that you've got a couple of orders on mm -hmm. the go. Um, and this is a long-term project. I mean, even 10 years ago, if somebody had said to you that you'd end up building six, seven rotary engines, I'm surely you would have laughed. Um, so what, what's your opinion? Why do you think that there's this little mini boom in, in people actually wanting a 100-year-old design? There's a lot of interest in World War I aircraft. And the other thing is they're more affordable. You know, anything World War II is, is very hard for anyone to afford unless you've got a lot of money. Mm. Um, if you're serious about aviation and you wanted to build a World War aircraft, you can. Yeah. Um, and with like Capero making original kits, you can actually build an original, pretty close to an original airframe, um, put one of our engines in it, and you've got the real deal, you know, as, right. as it w was back in the day. Safe. And it's safe. Yeah. You know? yeah. All right, well, we will look forward to seeing well, both the PUP and the one and a half strutter, hopefully in, in the very near future, um, yeah. proving that your engines are, are absolutely well, that's, that's, superb. That's what we need. We need some, some hours up, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that PUP fly. So, Excellent. Yeah, watch and, the space. Um, anybody who's thinking about building a World War I aircraft, can, or particularly one that uh, needs a, a rotary engine, can get in touch with you at the, the web, on the web. On the web, and, or, um, or and on Facebook, from. yeah, just... We're, we're, we're just Google cams or gnome rotaries and uh, you'll pop up. We'll, we, we, we pop up. Excellent, Tony. Thanks very much. No worries. Thank you very much. Cheers.